So, welcome back to another video. I feel so at ease now that I got everything off my chest and I feel so so free now that I could just speak freely and make a video without having to worry about whether the company is gonna come at me and scold me for saying something online or behaving a certain way on social media because that's that's a very important thing and that's something that companies definitely do look at. Not only do they pay attention to how you behave on the job, but also how you behave on social media. And I mean, I love posting videos. I love just, I don't know. I just love posting about myself and my life online on all types of platforms. And I feel like I was always kind of scared to just say something, even about the job, just online and on YouTube for you guys. So today I want to just talk about a couple of things that I feel like you should know. Um, if you're looking to become a flight attendant, these things are kind of important to the job. Uh, it's a little bit of a heads up. So that way, if you are looking to get into the industry, you can, you know, look into these things, see if it fits, if it's right for you and just kind of give you a head start. So that way, when you do come into the industry, you know how to like maneuver and move within the industry and move in a way that will benefit you and make your life easier. So I want to start off with just the process of, you know, the face to face and the interviews and applying to the job and all of that good stuff. Right. So it first starts off with you applying and applications tend to open up here and there. I'm not sure where the industry is at now, but when I came into the industry, they were hiring a lot of people. And I feel like just the aviation industry needed a lot of flight attendants at the time. So they were hiring and opening their applications a lot. I'm not talking about just United. I'm talking about Delta, Southwest, American Airlines, all the big US airlines were opening up their applications a lot because they needed a lot of flight attendants. And so after you apply, after you find out when they open up their applications, you apply and then you get a uh, it's kind of like a virtual questionnaire, I would call it, because they give you questions to answer online and you kind of sent off a video of you answering those questions. Now, my best advice for that portion is just to be very confident. You know, you could look at the question and take your time with it and just try to sound very affirmative and confident and obviously look good through the video, right? After that, you move forward with a first interview, which is a, uh, an online interview. And most of the time, uh, from what I see online, people mention the STAR method. I suggest you look into that. I'm not too sure how to break down the STAR method, but what I can say about that is that the STAR method is a way of answering questions that they throw at you. And for me, the way that I looked at STAR, it was, it's definitely an acronym, but how I thought about it was that you got to answer the question with the topic, uh, the situation that they're giving you, how you would resolve it, and then the result of your resolution, right? And I feel like that's the greatest, that's a really good tip because you're answering questions kind of with reason, right? You're giving them a what, when, where, and this is why I did that, or this is the solution, or this is the result of what I did to solve that issue. And that makes you come off very strong. Now, once you get through all of the beginning stages, you will get the face-to-face -face, um, interview. Now, I feel like this is kind of like my forte, and I feel like I could speak a lot more on this, just because once you get past the other stuff, which are somewhat easier, because it's just regular kind of like a regular job interview per se. I feel like the face-to-face -face is the most, the most important part. My face-to-face -face was very weird. You know, we didn't even get through the full interview because they had to shut down the building and we kind of got left with no answers. But the best thing that I can say is definitely dress the part. And when you get in there, try and socialize with the people that you're around with. Don't try to kind of outshine people, but just make yourself make the people in the room be aware that you're there right kind of leave off an, a good impression to the people around you because the trainers that are there in the room will also notice you they'll notice the people that are more vocal that look more comfortable that look the part that are confident I feel like that's kind of like one of the biggest tips that i could give and confidence is definitely key if you go in there with all types of confidence and acting like you're already a flight attendant they'll love it and I feel like also talking to people around you kind of makes you at ease. And after you're comfortable with the people around you, you'll be comfortable with the people interviewing you. 
Now, for the people that ask me how long the process takes, the process takes a little bit of a long time. It took me about three weeks to get the face to face after doing my online interview. So and then it took me about two weeks to hear back from anyone after I send in my application. So it could definitely take about a month for you to go through the process. Like I said, I don't know how things are going now. It could be much faster. For me, it took about a month for me to even get the face-to-face -face, uh, interaction. So before you apply in general, I feel like it is a great idea to look into how the job works and how the company that you're applying to functions in general for flight attendants, right? I feel like when I just threw myself at it, I didn't do any type of research. I didn't really know what was waiting for me, except from what I heard from what I heard from other people. So I didn't really know how the industry functioned. And I felt like I was going into the job a little bit of a step behind compared to other people that may have already done the research or had family members in the industry. I feel like those people kind of knew how to maneuver the industry and just use the systems that companies have to their advantage to either to either get more hours make more money or have better flying and an important thing that i feel like you guys should look into are the contracts and how the company works take for example united they give us this booklet this booklet is full of the whole contract of united i'm not sure if i could show any of this but basically what you're allowed to do, what you're not allowed to do, what the company is allowed to do to you. All types of rules are within this book. And keep in mind, this is a pretty big book, right? And it's written in legal terms. So it could be sometimes confusing. It could be kind of just a little bit too much for an individual, especially if you don't really know how things function. So I feel like it's really good to know how the company works with their contracts, what they offer, what kind of rules they follow, what kind of contract you're getting yourself into. Because like I said, I basically signed this contract without knowing anything. And when you, at least for me, when I was training, we did not go through any of the contract. All they did was like, hey, look, this is a contract. You have resources online that kind of dumb down the contract and break it down in English terms, not legal terms. And yeah, good luck, you know, study that. And that would be the best way to, for you to maneuver through the early stages of flight attending. So it could be very vague. You could be kind of lost. You could be stuck with not flying enough, not making enough money. But if you know how to how to play it through the rules, then you could definitely benefit off the contract and kind of just use it to your advantage instead of letting the company do whatever they want with you. So speaking of the contract, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, the reserve life and sitting reserve. I feel like this is also in the contract, but I want to pick at it separately because it's very important since when you're barely starting within the industry, most of the time you're going to start off a sitting reserve. And not all companies have, you know, the system of sitting reserve. I believe Delta kind of transitioned their flight attendants with like a couple of reserve days and then a couple of lines for them. But um, most companies have a reserve system. And I feel like you should look into how the reserve system works within the company because it'll kind of let you know kind of whether you're going to be sitting at home a lot or at the airport. You won't always be flying. You know, there's a difference between holding a line and sitting reserve. And it's just really important to know how the reserve works because like I've said bef before, if you know how the system works, then you can use it to your advantage and either get better flying, make more money, and just better your schedule. I feel like when I was just, when I got into flight attending, um, I didn't know anything about the reserve life. And yeah, there's guides online for the company, but I feel like it's something that the company should, should touch up on, but like they didn't at all. So you just kind of get thrown in there and you're not really sure what you're doing. You're just kind of riding the wave. But if you really know how to move in the reserve system, then you could definitely make your life easier. A great example would be the, at the fact that you could preference certain flying, certain hours, certain times to your reserve life, and they will try to schedule you according to whatever you preference. But little things like that are things that didn't really get taught to us, but are things that are out in the open that you could look into. So that way, when you do come into the industry, you already know what you're doing. And I feel like reserve is a really important topic that you got to look into 
because you will most likely be sitting on reserve for like the first two to three years of your whole career. It could even be longer. I know of people that have been sitting in reserve for like five years, right? So it's kind of really important to really know what the reserve life is like within the company you are applying to. Another important thing that I feel like you should look into, which is something that I did not even think about when I threw myself at the industry, is the pay and how you get paid. Not everyone knows this, but flight attendants only get paid when the airplane door gets closed. There's other stuff that you get paid for, but that's kind of like when our time starts ticking. So, and like there's times where maybe I had like a long delay and I was just at the airport all day. And yeah, I'm getting paid what we call per diem, which is kind of like lunch money, like a couple of dollars on the side. But I'm not really getting paid my hourly pay because I'm not on their airplane working the flight. So things like these are good to know because a person kind of expects to get paid like an hourly rate, but that's kind of not how the industry works. And the companies kind of function differently in their pay. Like I mentioned before, I got paid my per diem when I was in, in base. Uh, we got paid when the door closed. There's companies that pay for boarding. I didn't get paid for boarding. The amount of hours you work, if it doesn't correlate to the amount of flying hours you do, you're not gonna get paid what you work, right? So little things like these are something that you really, really gotta look into. So definitely look into that. Um, I know also that um, the minimum hours per month can vary between the companies. So that's kind of like a important thing to look into to know how many minimum hours you get paid, whether you fly or not. And lastly, something that I feel like <laughs> I had to learn and experience the hard way is the idea of commuting into work. Commuting could sound a little bit fun. It could sound beneficial. Say you don't want to move to your base and you feel like, okay, it's I live a little close to the base and I could maybe make a three hour fly work like every time that I got to go to work. And I just want to say off the bat, it really isn't a good idea. And the reason why that is, is because I feel like living in base gives you so much more freedom. Uh, you don't have to be going back and forth from state to state just to work a shift. And there's times where maybe I was sitting on reserve and I didn't get used. Well, if I moved and I had a, a space for myself, I was free to just go back home and just kind of go home and relax and go to my personal space, right? But if you're commuting in, you don't have that luxury. You have to get a hotel room or stay at a crash pad. And yeah, that's fun and adventurous and it's a cool experience, but I feel like there's nothing better than to have your own personal space, your own little home, right? So it's good to live in base instead of commuting in. And the fact that standby flying works off of seniority. There's times where maybe you can't make a flight because the whole flight is booked or maybe you're too low on the list to get onto the airplane that you need to use to commute okay yeah you could sit on a jump seat when you're commuting but those jump seats are very uncomfortable and if you're gonna be going into work right when you land it's not the greatest sitting on a very uncomfortable seat just so you could go to work and sit on that seat again for your shift you feel me so i feel like commuting kind of was a big mistake for me and if you think you could make it happen i feel like there's more pros than cons to moving to your base that you're gonna be flying out of. So overall, I feel like these things are a couple of things that you should definitely look into if you are looking into becoming a flight attendant just in general. Yeah, I feel like if you kind of just learn these things, you will definitely come into the industry a couple of steps ahead of people. Uh, you might learn a couple of things that others might not even know. So if you're in the industry learning new things, share it to the people around you because you might think that they know what you know, but sometimes they don't, right? Everyone's constantly learning, especially if you're new and you haven't been in the industry for a long time. People are constantly learning how to kind of maneuver the loopholes within contracts and within the industry. Definitely look into these things. I'm sorry if I rambled too much or if I kind of went into circles a lot. <laughs> it's kind of like my first time just freeballing this and speaking to you guys just straight from the heart and from what I you know my past experience so I hope uh, it helped a little bit I hope you guys didn't just kind of get a little confused and stuff but, but definitely what I want you guys to take away from this video is to do your own research into the companies that you're applying to and learn how they function so that way when you do get into the company you know what you're doing and your life will be so much easier once again everyone I love you guys 
I truly do. If you guys made it this far, if you guys just have been watching my videos, if you guys tag along, you know, I love all of my viewers. I love the whole community. So I appreciate you guys. Thanks for having my back. Thanks for looking out for me. Thanks for supporting. And yeah, I hope, I hope this helped and I'll definitely catch you guys on the next one. So see you guys later.